You're tuned in to Tackle Fanatics TV. Yeah, I come to Gigantic uh, about five years ago, something like that, and uh, been looking forward to it for like a year now. Just missed the first trip, because uh, I started there about a year ago. Um, yeah, really looking forward to it, mate. Having fished the main lake um, three times previous, um, so this is my fourth time here, I know the, the place relatively well anyway. So I knew, I knew what swims that, you know, I, knew, I, had a, I had a list of swims in my head as regards to fish sightings and things like that because as soon as everybody starts leading around and spawning, etc., they, they tend to shuffle around anyway. Well, the draw, as always, very nervous affair. Um, butterflies in the, in the stomach, all that kind of thing. You know, there's a, the, for, for, for me and for a lot of us, there's, you know, there's a lot riding on this kind of thing. It's, it's the one chance you get to, to potentially come a bag of whacker. So I actually ended up coming out second in the draw. So I had another really good draw. And I got my second choice swim, uh, which is the Stink. And first choice was Alamo. Really, because it, it, has, it has had a lot of form lately. So obviously, you know, you're not going to ignore that kind of thing. It's also it's a swim that I've never fished before. I'd love to fish, um, but then so was the stink. So I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. Every single year I'm here, I come out really bad in the John Lee Swore. Um, it just happens every single time I come here. It's so, so annoying. Last year I was 13th out of 14, but luckily the fish turned up in the swim and I caught a few that year. 11 out of 12, it's just like, oh, it's so annoying. I don't know, I must have upset someone, I think. Uh, I really don't know, mate. It's just one of the things. Everyone always says to me, oh, you know, your luck will change next time. It will change. And I think to myself, yeah, maybe it will. And then come here, no, exactly the same. Done the draw, big anticipation building up to it. I was pretty cool on the way down, but before it, I was just in bits, you know. It's like, it means a lot for the week. Got number one, can't ask for more than that. Uh, weight off my shoulders, straight in the Alamo. So that was my number one. I've chose Alamo because the consistency of the swim, Big fish territory as well. I was in there last year with James. He came in with the quality, you know, some real big fish. I caught, but you know, I can see what the swimming can do. Um, left hand side where I fished again, he's doing the bites, so I just carry on where I left off from last year, basically. Yeah, it's, it's always exciting to come here because you know what's swimming around in here. Obviously, it's a different dimension for me because it's my thing, it's my baby. I'm looking at it from a, you know, how pristine does the site look, how big have the babies got that we've grown on. Are oh, the swims in a good nick, all that kind of thing, as well as, you know, there's some monsters out there to be caught. I, I wrote all the numbers down for my swims um, in order, so I knew what to pick when, when my number came up. Picked number seven out of the draw, which is not good in the back half of it, um, and amazingly got my second choice of swim, which was Big Girls. Um, after what Tom did in that swim last year, um, and the fact that it's, it's got a little bit weedy again, the fish are hugging that margin. We saw a fish there as we walked past, but more importantly, you know, it, it's got form at this time of the year. I know exactly how Tom fished it, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'd like to catch any of the ones I haven't already caught, to be perfectly honest, but at the top of that list, the German, Hardly ever gets caught, um, hasn't been caught on the bottom for absolutely ages. Was caught at 76 pound this spring on a zig. Just an unbelievable catcher. That one, definitely, that's, a, that's an angry looking fish. And the target, I called it the target because it was my target fish when it was 50 pound, just because of the shape of it. And it, again, it's, it's a male, it just looks like it's gonna beat you up on the bank. So one of them two would be amazing, but let's just get the first bite first of all. Thank you. 
after the draw yesterday, obviously I was absolutely dooming um, coming out 11 out of 12, but um, I'm in a swim on the end of the lake and sometimes they do shaft that spit, so I sort of, you have to have a little bit of hope that they're going to turn up in the morning. Um, and they did, they sort of turned more up on Dan's side really in, in big girls. Um, I saw two fish my side of the spit about six in the morning, something like that, just after first light. And then um, it all went quiet and I thought bite time had passed, um, even though there haven't been any bites. Um, and I saw fizzing just to the right hand side of my left hand rod. Um, and about three minutes after that, I had the bite. So yeah, massive, massive result. The fight was immense, really. Um, first of all, I thought it was small because it was taking so much line after, after I hooked into it. Um, and usually that means that they're sort of the, the smaller commons, you know, 20, 25 pounds. Um, and then I saw it and I thought maybe it's a bit bigger and I saw it as a mirror. Um, and it turned out to be white lines at 48 pound 12, which is exactly the same weight as uh, James Turner had it last year, which is pretty mad. Um, because, I, because I thought that um, there weren't going to be many fish in the swim, I only fished two rods, I didn't want to lace it full of lines. Um, and I fished two separate spots really accurately, really small spots, um, and didn't put much bait out. So my right hand rod went out towards the spit. Um, it's probably 10, 15 yards off the spit, so I just walked around there and bolted, you know, 10, 20 pouchfuls of, um, of tigers around that one. Um, and then my left hand rod did the same with a spawn. So just one rod, one spot, 15 spawns, something like that. Um, just enough for a bite, so if they turn up, I could get one pretty quick, and that's what happened. Last night, um, put, put topped up the spot with some more bait. Um, Cause I had a bite last night, which unfortunately I got cut off. Um, so I put some more bait out. Um, fish started showing quite early be, beyond my bait. Uh, shortly before losing that one um, this morning, I um, had a lovely uh, scaly mirror and we, we just weighed 35 pounds, 15 ounces. Um, lovely, lovely carp, uh, lovely linear. Um, so yeah, really cracking, really cracking fish. So you know, really happy to get that one. Um, when they look like that, you know, well, any any fish from here is a result. But when they look like that, it's, it makes them all the more special, you know. You know the <laughs> the old rod tip incident um, is, is a one I think you're um, you're you're aiming at there. It's uh, yeah, it was a unfortunate not failure, um, and uh, consequently, oh well. And you know, my rod tip flew off at the same time, but. Um, we got we got it back. We rescued it. Um, from, luckily, it didn't go too far out, um, so we were able to rake it and get it back in. So yeah, no, they're, my, they're well. They're not any old rods. They're my um, you know cherished um, uh, Harrison Torixes that I've had now for about ten years. Um, caught lots of fish with them, you know, and they're just. Um, I am very sentimental about my tackle, so I, I was I was gutted, but I knew, I knew I'd get it back. You know, if I had to dive in and go and get down there myself, I'd have got it. But. Um, but yeah, we managed to hook it out with the rake. But um, yeah, special special rod, so um, that, was, that was a bit gutting, but happy to get it back. Um, okay, so the rigs I've been using um, are just short lengths of dark matter tubing. Um, short, just to help me get the range. Um, so 14 inches, um, a running lead clip, which has changed from earlier in the week. That was a, I was using hybrid lead clips, but I found that um, I got done. I got done once on that where the lead ejected, and then consequently the barbless hook fell out. Underneath that, I've got about 10 inches of dark matter braid, uh, 20 pound dark matter braid um, to a size four um, wide gape, um, just not knotless knotted, but 10 turns up, and then two uh, above uh, below the hair, um, just to kick the hook out a little bit more, and then just a, a waft, krill waft hook bait, um, quite tight, well, quite close to the to the hook.
again! <laughs> Brilliant, cheers to who's getting. Yes, check that out. 28 pound on the button, well pleased to get him after two absolute disasters, lost two fish this week. Um, not fish to swim well at all, there's been fish all over me and uh, finally I've unlocked the code and managed to get one in, well chuffed. Drew 12, which is um, obviously end of the end of the draw. Um, didn't think I'd get this swim. This was eighth on my list, so I was, I was quite happy to get this swim. It's sort of my style of fishing, I guess. So yeah, once I got in here, I was I was alright. I was happy I could sort of do the best of it. There's a few fish in the snag. So. The old weights off the shoulders, knees were knocking, but it's all done now. Kick back and just fish now and enjoy it. you've been tuned in to TFTV. Tackle Fanatic stock an extensive range of tackle and bait from all the leading manufacturers. To check it out, go to www.tacklefanatic.co.uk. Member Tackle Fanatic's also offer finance to make your tackle purchase more affordable. Tight lines and wet nets from everybody at TFTV.